Okay, this lesson will be learning how to do vector addition. That means that how to add up uh, forces and velocity. As I mentioned before, okay, some examples of vector addition is that you add up, you can help use to add up forces, or you can add up uh, two different velocities or even more different velocities. Um, of course, vector addition is different from your scalar addition because vectors have both magnitude and direction so you need to take into both uh, magnitude and direction into consideration okay I'll use an example to help you illustrate so what is the total force if you add up 10 Newton and 6 Newton um, you'll find that it's not just only a simple matter of 10 plus 6 which is 60 Newton it could be true if the forces are in the same direction so the, if the net or the resultant total force is 60 Newton but what if they are opposing each other? You find that if 10 oppose 6, you find uh, the net force or the resultant force will be 4 Newton. So this is what I meant. If both are the same, uh, sorry, both are of uh, different directions, you find that if we take right as the positive, and you find, uh, you find that the negative 4 uh, would be indicating that this is the left. Okay, so you add them up 10, at negative 4, you get positive 6. And positive is telling you that it is traveling towards the right. Sorry, it is actually uh, towards the right. The force is towards the right. So the resultant force tells you that it is 6 Newton towards the right. If you have 6 Newton pulling left and 3 Newton pulling right, okay, uh, as previously before, you just add them up 3 which is positive 3 uh, right and then this is actually 6 Newton but left okay the negative sign indicates left so if you add these two up you find that it is a negative 3 so again intuitively you know that if you have 6 Newton over here 3 over Newton here it is actually 3 Newton uh, moving towards the uh, left okay the force so but this method only a is applicable if all the forces are parallel to each other. Parallel meaning that they are the same or opposite direction, completely opposite direction. Ge general rule for this case is that you just add up all the forces that are positive and you subtract away those that are considered negative and you'll get the answer. But what if you need to add up forces that are not parallel to each other? So one example is this, so if you have a box, you pull 5 Newton this way and you pull 10 Newton in a diagonal manner, so what will be the resultant? And definitely it is not just simply 10 plus 5, okay? So it's much a bit more complicated than that. First, actually you need to represent the force in a scale diagram. The magnitude is actually can be represented by the how long the arrow is or the length. The longer the arrow, the stronger the force. So if let's say you draw it by one centimeter represent two newton so if you you can represent this 10 newton force by a five centimeter line and likewise if this two new uh, five newton you can represent it by a 2.5 centimeter line we try to draw the this diagram as big as possible to minimize the errors okay so before i move on uh, then how do we actually add them up okay we use a simulation to help you to understand Okay, so right now we use this example. Uh, there are two forces, one is a blue line and one is green line. And intuitively you know that if somebody is pulling you this way and somebody, another person is pulling you this way and assuming that they are equally strong, okay, remember the length of the arrow represents how strong it is, um, generally you know that you'll be pulled in this manner. Okay, and if they are equally strong, you'll be pulled straight in this manner. But if they are not strong, uh, they are not equally strong, if let's say this is weaker, uh, you find that of course you tend towards the uh, blue force. But if this is stronger, you tend to be uh, the green force. Or, or if they are put at a different angle, you find that the, uh, the forces or the red line, uh, which represents the, the uh, addition of the forces, would be uh, different. Okay, uh, If you have different angles or different strengths. So this is uh, the basis, but intuitively, it, if you have two forces, they will be somewhere, uh, not in the middle, but uh, in between, okay? For vector addition, uh, this time round, we'll show you two methods by uh, drawing a scale diagram. 
okay, or mathematical calculation. So we just draw the forces uh, to scale. Okay, we are just going to show you this uh, first method. So choose and shift one of the force arrow to the other end of the force arrow. And the end result or the net result will be an arrow that starts and ends at the end of those two arrows. Um, seems complicated, but with the diagram it is much easier. So right now let's just dis disregard the box first. We find that what you need to do is just to choose one of the arrows. Okay, in this case, let's just choose the five newton and shift it up. Okay, and shift it to the arrow tip. And what you need to do is actually to this is the starting point, and this is the ending point. So what you need to do is that you start and draw a line, okay, or arrow, and this red line is actually the resultant force of adding ten newton and five newton. And the magnitude of this uh, force would be the measured length of this arrow. So using an example, um, this was 5 cm, this was 2.5 cm. And if let's say this uh, found out to be 6.5 cm length, you just only need to multiply by 2, uh, and then it will be a 13 newton force. Okay, so this is what I meant. And the direction of the force is actually as drawn. Um, so you just only need to measure from the diagram. So usually what you need to do is to uh, just take the horizontal line and you measure the angle. Um, you may say that uh, maybe it's only applicable if you shift 5 newton up. Okay, actually it doesn't matter. You can actually choose to shift the 10 newton across. Okay, same thing. If this is starting point, you just only shift the 10 to the arrow head over here. So and you find that end result, if you measure this, would be exactly the same as the previous. So this is known as the tip to tail method. For beginners, actually it is better to draw a parallelogram instead of a triangle in terms of the tip to tail method. It actually saves you the trouble of deciding which arrows you should shift. You Then you just draw two parallel lines and the diagonal is uh, the result is would be the resultant force. So you draw a parallel line, okay, which of the ten newton. You draw another parallel line, uh, with the five newton. And the diagonal would be the resultant. So this is actually the parallelogram method, and it's more suitable for uh, beginning students. But if your force is this way, where the force are not together, actually it doesn't matter. Okay, just treat this box as a single point. The matter is actually the same. So just treat the box as a small dot and you just shift the arrows together and you apply the steps. So you just treat this as one single dot and this represents the box. And you shift the arrow up and this will be the start to the end this will be the resultant force. This method is still applicable if there are three or more forces acting on a single object. So let's say it is the object and you have three four separate forces pulling this way. It is actually the same, but it's just only more tedious. So what you need to do is actually to shift the different arrows. Uh, if you label this as A, B and C, let's just choose A. Okay, so this is start and this is the end. So you choose one of the arrows so we shift the B over here, and right now this is the end, and you right now shift the remaining arrow C over in the parallel line, and this is the new ending point. So this is the start, this is the end, the resultant arrow will be this. Okay. Okay, right now I will show you that it doesn't matter if you choose any of the arrows, okay, the sequence of the arrows you find that uh, all of them uh, would lead to the same resultant force. Okay, so right now, let's just choose one of the arrows. Okay, it's going up. So let's choose this arrow. Okay, to shift over here. So this is up and down. And we shift the remaining arrow over here. You find that the resultant force would be from here to here. Okay, uh, we just do a bit of alignment. So you see that it is this green arrow. Okay. You find that it doesn't matter if you use uh, uh, whichever arrow first. 
okay so you can choose this arrow first instead of going up okay it goes like this and you use the remaining arrow it will lead to the same resultant okay so what you need to do is again you just only need to arrange from tip to tail tail to tip, tip to tail and then you find that this will be the resultant force in summary to add out the vectors you just need to draw a scale diagram and either you use the tip to tail method or you use the parallelogram method but for parallelogram method it is more effective if it's two vectors only if you have three or more use the tip to tail and draw the resultant vector measure it and using the scale you determine its magnitude and you measure the angle compared to its horizontal line to determine its direction these are resources that I use okay that's the end of today's lesson